David Levin, and welcome to another fulfilling episode of Pop Goes the Culture, the behind-the-scenes TV stories you wouldn't have known from the people who were there. Today, I'm talking to the most musical mom in television sitcom history. Of course, I'm talking about Shirley Jones, otherwise known as Shirley Partridge, the mother of the fictional Partridge family. In this four-part conversation, Shirley talks about her entire career from Broadway to Hollywood, her Oscar-winning turn for Best Supporting Actress as a prostitute in El Gantry, and of course, the sitcom that cemented her in the minds of baby boomers everywhere as the coolest mom on TV. In part one, Shirley and I started talking about the Partridge family. This interview was recorded before the passing of the great David Cassidy, who played her son Keith, and who also, in real life, was her stepson. She'll tell us how she got the part and the true untold story of Shirley and the bus. Here's Shirley Jones. Well, I had had a, a, quite a big movie career before the Partridge family, about 38 motion pictures I had done. And um, all of a sudden, a script came to my agent's office and said, they said, Shirley, we have a script being offered to you. It's a television series. It's a pilot called The Partridge Family. And it has music, you know. And I was really, at this point in time, it was a, really just a private thing for me. I had three small sons at home, and I had been on every movie location and away from home a, a lot. And so I said, you know, this sounds wonderful. I want to read that. I, you know, to stay home and do a, a television series that you like, you know, and have some fun and stay home and be able to raise my kids would be an ideal situation for me at this time in my life. And so I got the script, I read the script, and I, I loved it. You know, I was the first working mother on television. And so that was kind of exciting for me at the time. Now, my agents, the people that gave me the script, said, Shirley, you know, we did this because you said you were interested in television. But, you know, at that time, uh, uh, movie stars didn't do television. It was a big step down. That was what they called it. And they said, and besides which, even if the show is successful, you know, your movie career will be finished because you'll be Mrs. Partridge for the rest of your life. Well, I didn't listen to anybody. I said, I don't care. I want to, I want to do this. And of course, that's how it came to be. And um, of course, as we know, the pilot was a, a success and we had all these wonderful actors working with us. You know, my stepson, David Cassidy, was Keith Partridge. And, and uh, as it turned out, you know, the, the agents were right. It did kill my movie career. <laughs> but would I have not done it? Absolutely not. I have no regrets whatsoever. It was great. Let's talk about those early <clears throat> couple of days. In fact, even the, before even, I guess, you were, weren't aware at first that David was even cast, were you? No, I had no idea about David. Matter of fact, um, they were, I was the first person that they cast. And then, of course, they said, would I do tests with all the little kids that were coming in and out? And um, the, the manager, you know, Dave Madden and so on. And then all of a sudden, the producer came to me one day and he said, Shirley, we need to talk about something. He said, we have a wonderful young man that we're really interested in to play Keith Partridge. But he, he said, we want to know how you feel about it. I said, who is it? He said, it's David Cassidy, your stepson. I said, no kidding. That's great. And they said, he's really our favorite. You know, we think he's great because we've tested him and tested a few other people. But, you know, we want to make sure that you have a good relationship because, you know, if this show goes four or five years, it's, it's got to be happy. I said, no problem whatsoever. You know, he's a great guy and he's extremely talented. And, of course, <clears throat> the first day that I... I was testing with some of the other little, little kids that were testing, and he was on the set. And I came walking on the set, and David looked at me, and he said, what are you doing here? Because he didn't know, you see, that I was going to be. He said, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm your mommy on this show. <laughs> he said, what? <laughs> they hadn't told him. They had to ask me first, you know, how I felt about it. So that's how it happened. Well, you were married to his dad, but you didn't live with him at the time, is that correct? That's there? right, yeah, we were, we were sort of uh, at, the, at the beginning of the party. I, I did at the beginning of the Partridge family, yes. During the Partridge family is when we separated, more or less. But yeah, we were living together then because actually Jack Cassidy, my husband, um, was in the pilot. He, he, he was played like the next door neighbor and just came and knocked on the door and I opened the door and I went, ah! Because it was a surprise, obviously. They didn't use it, you know, but it was one of those things that they threw in to get my reaction. So, yeah, he was there. We were still together then. But David 
grew up in his mom. Yes, David grew up with his mother, basically. But, uh, you know, we had him. Uh, he was my stepson. I had him Christmases and summer holidays and stuff like that. You know, he was in the, in the same city and so forth, you know. And uh, so we, we knew each other. But strangely enough, you know, for David, I was kind of the wicked stepmother in a way, you know, as little children formed their own, their own opinions and took his father away and all of that. So as a little boy, we weren't that close because I couldn't, he wouldn't let me get close to him. And the wonderful thing about the Partridge family is that we did become close on an adult level, and it was great, and we still are. And that's what the Partridge family did for the two of us. That's nice. Yeah, that's it was nice. great. Let's talk about the pilot, and let's talk. And I love that first episode. There's a there was I was listening to the music the other day. By the way, when when we booked you for the show, everybody started singing Partridge Family movies. <laughs> of course, I know. Office. People went crazy. <laughs> I know. Uh, it was just great. Um, <laughs> and I'm remembering that first episode, and I'm remembering all the kids on stage, and I'm remembering that moment where. You're all sitting on stage. It's a great moment. It's yeah. A great moment. You're all sitting there. Okay, close your eyes. We're in the garage. Could you talk about that? Right. And what was it like working with them for the first time? Well, you know, the, the, the first episode is that, you know, mom was not involved at all yet. Mom was paying the bills and, and uh, you know, people ask me what happened to your husband. Well, it, it is stated in the first episode that he passed away and that I am a widow and raising my kids and, um, they have a, a, you know, a garage where they play all their instruments and have a little band going, you know. And um, so the, the, whole, the whole thing is, is that I'm sort of trying to figure out what I'm going to do now to keep this family together, you know, and because and, uh, I've been just a housewife. And uh, I go out and they're playing the music and, hey, mom, can, why don't you sing with us? Let, why don't you try it and see what happens, you know. Oh, are you crazy? I can't do this. I've never, I don't know how to sing. I don't, I'm not a, you know, I'm, I can't play an instrument. I can't. And of course they all talked me into it as if you, if you remember. And, uh, all of a sudden they say, yay, we have a group. We can, you know, we'll get a bus, you know, we'll, <laughs> we'll go on the road. <laughs> and you know, it's the old story. It's like the old Judy Garland movie. They said, you know, we, we got a, we got a barn. Let's, you know, let's put on a show. And that's really what happened. Amazing. Yeah, it was fun, but yeah. and as I said, the thing that intrigued me, which which I was really kind of proud of, you know, and the women's liberation movement was also very proud. I was the first working mother on television, you know. Up to that point, all the mothers have been, you know, taking roasts out of the oven and taking care of the house. Period. And all of a sudden, you know, um, I got to go to work. You know. Tell me about and drive a bus. And drive a bus. Tell me about the bus. Well, that was something. First of all. It was a shift in the floor. You know, it was an old bus, and it was a shift in the... And by the way, we did help paint it. We all did. We all got, you know... It shows that, and I, I believe in one of the... Probably the pilot, I guess it is. Um, but we did help paint it, and it was fun to do. Um, but I did have to learn to drive it. I mean, they said, surely, you know, you've got to do this. Now, of course, I'd grown up with the automatic shift. I'd never driven a gear shift of any kind, let alone one in the floor, you know. <clears throat> so... They had this teamster there with me. He said, okay, we're going we're gonna to take some lessons, you know. And he did. I mean, I would go in every other day or something, and he would show me how to drive the bus and, you know, do that. And I learned to drive it. And at the end of the series, at the end of the last year, uh, we had our closing party, and the whole Teamsters Union got together and gave me a big plaque and a, and a, a badge saying I was now an honorary member of the Teamsters Union. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, it's so great. You can go on any set and drink coffee now. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So it was fun. So the music was a huge part of the show, and that was with the exception of a show like The Monkees, for example. Yeah, that was the first one. The Monkees had the first uh, musical show, I think. But yes, but but there really was, had never been one like uh, like our show. And you know, we, it was based on the Cow Sills. I don't know whether you you knew that they were a singing group, family singing group. And uh, the story itself, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> was based on the cow seals, and as a matter of fact, was written for them. They, uh, uh, the the writer, wanted the cow seals to play the parts. It was actually written for them. He was enamored with them, but they weren't actors, you see. And they tested them before they tested anybody else. They tested the the, 
the Cowsills, and um, they just weren't actors. You know, they were wonderful performers, but not actors. So they had to decide to then go with actors, and wow. that's how we yeah. got it. How did the Cowsills feel about, feel about the show? They loved the show, yeah. The, in, in the beginning, they were, I think, very disappointed that they didn't get to do it, because they were sort of, you know, wined and dined and told that they were going to be the stars of the show, and it just didn't work out. And um, so they were very disappointed. But when they saw the pilot, they, they, they loved it. And they, they, they loved the choices that, that were made, you know, with the actors. And, um, you know, I intermittently through the years, they would come to Los Angeles, or they, they lived in the area, and uh, do a show. And we'd all go and watch them, you know, perform. And just recently, matter of fact, uh, of course, a couple of them are gone now, passed away. but. Uh, just recently, they had a benefit for, for one of the brothers, and I went and saw them and sang with one of them on the stage. So it was really nice. They're a oh, nice family. Um, let's talk about actually the production of the music and how that would happen. Well, in actuality, the only two people that went to the recording sessions were David Cassidy and myself, you know, because the other, <laughs> the other actors did not sing or play an instrument. We faked pretty good, but they, they, they didn't do it. So the recording sessions were basically, basically David, if you want to know the truth. I mean, I think in five years we did the show, I think I had two solos that I did in, in, the, in the show. David became, as you know, the teen idol of America. And uh, so, but I was in the recording sessions with him. And I would do the oohs and ahs in the background and, you know, a few little lines that I may have in the song. And we had a lot of gold records. I mean, I think we had five gold records. So that was amazing. And by the way, unexpected. I mean, they had no idea what they had. When they went into it, they thought it was going to be a fun family show with music. But they didn't have any idea that it was going to be that kind of thing where we'd be the number one hit record in the country. And they had no idea what they had with David Cassidy. I mean, when they saw what David had, that David could actually play the guitar brilliantly, that he was a real performer, that he sang beautifully, and he looked like a, you know, a Greek god, um, they said, wow, we got something here. You know, this is, but the, then they went ahead with it. You know, the PR people and everybody else said, wow, we've got a tiger by the tail. You know, let's, let's deal with this. Uh, but in the beginning, they didn't, they did, had no idea about he that. He started living quite the rock star life, didn't oh, he? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, he would go out on weekends and do the concerts, you know, all over the country. And, uh, you know, a few times I was upset with him because he'd come late for the, the Monday morning, you know, read and the rehearsal and so forth that we had and kept everybody waiting. And finally, I just had to say, David, I know, you know, that these concerts are important to you and they're important for the show, but, you know, you cannot keep a crew waiting like that. And so we had our little, I played mama a bit. <laughs> how, how did he respond? He he agreed with me, but he said, but, "But Cheryl, you know, I'm 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 just so exhausted, you know." Though I said, "Well, that's too bad, you know. You you got a show to do, so, you know." And he was he was better about it than after that. That's it for now. Next time, my four-part interview with Shirley Jones concludes as we discuss Ron Howard, Partridge Family guest stars. What was up with the now you see him, now you don't dog? I ask her what she thinks Shirley Partridge would be up to now, and her favorite episodes. We'll also talk about Danny Bonaducci's reality show, Breaking Bonaducci, which was on around the time we did this interview. I hope you'll check it out. Meanwhile, what was your favorite Partridge Family tune? Let me know in the comments below. Hey, you can follow Pop Goes the Culture on Twitter at PopGoCulture, Facebook, or email me at PopGoesTheCultureTV at gmail.com. And please don't forget to subscribe. Check out our Patreon page and be a part of the conversation live many weeknights at 9 p.m. Eastern where you can talk back to Pop Goes the Culture. And when we have a guest, you can Skype or FaceTime in to Ask Them Yourself. You can create an account at AskThemYourself.com. Phew! I'm David Levin. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you want to keep these conversations going, help me out by becoming a Patreon subscriber. Just three bucks a month gets you first dibs on Ask Them Yourself call-ins. 